Whether you're just using your PC to get the most out of your meta quest, or you shelled out a grand and upgraded to an index, PC VR is great for many reasons. With PC VR, you can get higher fidelity graphics, less frame drops, and even play exclusive titles like Half-Life Alex. However, when playing on PC VR, there's plenty of things you won't usually learn until you encounter a problem. That's why today, I'll be telling you 5 things you need to know before getting into PC VR. This is a tip that I will stand by until the day that I die. Get peripherals. If you use a Quest with a link cable or a wired headset like an index, grab a set of cable pulleys to keep the cord off your back and away from meddling. Pause. A good set of headphones or earbuds can also make your VR experience so much better, especially concerning the quality of the default Quest speakers. And most importantly, battery. If you use a Quest, a link cable is not going to charge your headset while playing. If anything, it'll simply delay the inevitable. Instead, get a special link cable that will charge your headset whilst playing. Do yourself a favor and invest in some goodies that'll make your VR experience way more comfortable and overall more enjoyable. Not only should you evaluate your equipment if you're having problems, but you should also evaluate your decision to not like and subscribe while you're at it. It's important to note, you will always get worse performance through a standalone headset hooked up to your PC. A dedicated PC VR headset like an Index is always going to yield better performance. If you are using a 7-Eleven USB-C charger as your link cable, I hate to break it to you, but it is not fast enough for the job. Make sure your link cable is one that is sold specifically as a VR link cable. Similarly, if you're using a headset like an Index and start seeing rainbow fuzz in your headset or get graphical problems, it's probably time to cry in the shower and shell out $90 for a new cable. I know this is a part of basic PC upkeep, but there's a disturbing amount of people who simply forget to update their drivers. There's also a similar amount of people who then wonder why they're suddenly getting worse performance. Update your graphics drivers, ladies and gentlemen. It does more than you think. This next tip might seem a little nerdy, so bear with me, it is probably the most important tip on this list. OpenXR is a workflow that many modern VR games use, even on standalone. It basically makes it really easy to map bindings across many different types of VR controllers. This makes development easier for studios, but there is one thing to note. If you use a meta headset, you'll need to go to the MetaLink software, click Settings, then General, then look for the box that says Set Meta Link as the OpenXR Runtime. If you're using a Steam VR headset, or you're using Steam Link for Meta Quest, then go to the Steam VR settings, click on OpenXR, and then set Steam VR as OpenXR Runtime. Finally, if you have a game on Steam that asks to boot up in OpenXR mode, make sure that that is the launch option you choose. Although some games will force you to run it through Steam VR, running OpenXR games through the correct OpenXR runtime will ensure you don't run into compatibility issues or poor performance. So, just to recap, set Meta Link as your OpenXR runtime if you're using Meta Air Link or a link cable for your Meta Quest. Set Steam VR as your OpenXR runtime if you're using a headset like a Valve Index or a Meta Quest with the Steam Link app. If you use Virtual Desktop, don't worry, VD has your back and will change your OpenXR runtime automatically. This kind of goes in tandem with updating your drivers, but when looking at a VR game, look at the recommended specs. For games, especially in VR, always treat recommended specs as the minimum. Some games are going to be simply more demanding than others, obviously. Gorilla Tag is going to be way easier to run than something like Half-Life Alex. The greatest part of the PC Master Race is trying to upgrade your PC along with all the new games that demand more and more resources to run. And finally, here's a little bonus tip from me to you, don't play VR chat. That toxic sludge of a social experience will eat a hole through your wallet. The urge to invest in a Valve Index with full body tracking and a PC with more RAM than storage space will grow on you the more you step into VR chat. If you want to save money and your mental health, don't play VR chat. Well, I hope you all liked today's video and I hope you learned a thing or two. I've been through all sorts of problems when it comes to PC VR, so I hope my suffering will save you from a similar fate. But I think that's all the time I have for today. Until next time, first to the key, first to the egg.